I like deal. Welcome back to another WoW video. Today we'll be doing episode 2 of My WoW Gold Guide 101. As stated in the last episode, this would be more blunt than farm this or farm that concept. So if you missed the last episode, please check it out here. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button to know when I upload. Due to YouTube's algorithm, small channels like mine are not seen much. With that out of the way, let's dive into the episode. Many new players and even old players need to make gold. And one of the many ways are to farm. Today's episode will cover the concept of farming. We will be covering some key points you should be looking at when taking a farm in consideration. So here is what we'll be covering. Is the farm shown level and eye level friendly? Is the type of farm raw or auction house gold or even both? Is the farm legit? Is the farm shown in the video first ran or did the YouTuber run it many times to get a good value? Is said items worth it on your auction house? And do you have the time to actually farm the said spot shown in videos? So let's start with the first question. Is the farm level friendly? When looking at a farm, most new players are max level and low eye level. In this situation, a high end farm content is harder for new players to do. Example, a new player is eye level 285 wants to farm the hottest thing at the moment, raid BOEs, which again guys, this is not the hottest thing, it's just an example. If said new player started a group with low eye levels to run trash runs in Palace on Mythic, it would be a long and hard road. Doable, but more effort for something that could take hours for a BOE due to eye level and how long to kill mobs. This is not the case for high eye level players, so a raid BOE farm would be great for high eye level, but not so for low eye levels. So moving along. Any content in BFA that is not in dungeons and not in raids is farmable by any level 20s. Thanks to the sync of mobs in your tune, this is going to be easier for everybody who's fresh 120. But there are two exceptions, Mechagon and Nadishar. This late in the expansion, getting a decent eye level is not hard, but if you're a new player and are on the road to it, Nadishar and Mechagon is not so friendly. Rares are not easy peasy and it takes more than one tune to kill the 120s and the 122s. Some rares are due to healing factors and just plain have a lot more HP due to some of the scaling. Also, this content is meant for a higher eye level than compared to the lower eye levels. So you're wondering, what about older content? Anything before Legion 110s can easily farm. Legion and before 120s can farm with ease without having to worry anything. Now, I will say right now, Legion raids and dungeons, you need to stay away from them because they're not legacy yet until next expansion. Once they're legacy, I will be covering this, and I will say right now, it will be worth the while to go do these. Now, let's move on to the next question. When looking for a farm, are you looking to wait for gold or to get gold right away? Maybe both at the same time. Either way, knowing what you want is a plus when picking a farm. Let's use the Iron Docks for the raw gold example. Iron Docks is one of the best spots for raw gold. You can get up to 5k plus raw gold an hour by selling everything from greens to boss drops. But the auction house value of the most greens is overflated and be honest to you, it's just not worth posting on the auction house at the moment. Don't get me wrong, some of the blues will still sell because they're very rare. That said, Iron Docks are more of a raw gold farm than anything else. Now let's move on to the auction type of farm. Let's talk about Karazhan on example. This is a raid that easily can be farmed by anyone. Go in, don't kill any of the bosses, just the mobs, and you're golden. Most items that drop here are silver and very low gold value if you sell to vendor. But when it comes to auction house, patterns and recipes are king here. Just look at the low end drop I got right now. It is 9k. I have got items here that are worth 100k and they are not inflated. They're actually worth that price. So you can see the big difference from actually a farm that drops tons of greens, which say they're 9k, 5k, and so forth, to a farm like this, which is a more of an auction house farm that shows, hey, you know, you got one item in about an hour to two hours, who knows how long it'll take you, and it's worth that much. There are many types of farms out there, pet, gathering, drops, etc. But there are two main archetypes, raw and auction house. It's up to you to pick or do both. There are no rules to abide by. Let's move on to the next question. This might touch base with a lot of people out there. Is this farm legit? Now let's go back to the iron docks. Let's make a scenario out of this. You watch a YouTuber farm this and get 100k in 15 or 30 minutes. He or she goes crazy saying this is the best spot ever. A new player would fall into the trap and say, oh my gosh, this is so good believing that he's old YouTuber. This YouTuber is supposed to help their subscribers not lead them the wrong way. That comes down to what type of person they are. The vet player will look at this and say, wait a minute, let me do some farming and see if it holds up. Now, even if the vet or the new player does the farm, it turns out the greens are showing 9K to 10K, etc. To the untrained gold maker, they would think, hey, this is actually good and the YouTuber is right. 
In the Iron Docks case, you would need to check out your auction house, not TSM or Undermine. This dungeon is overinflated and far from actual prices. Now back to the point, when looking at a farm, one should never take the results as solid proof or what you will get 100%, even for my farms until you try it. I say this because RNG plays a lot in farming items. I could go an hour and get a 100k item while another does the same farm and turns out said person does not get anything. That said, this does not make the farm bad. What makes farms no good or not legit is lying. Yes, I said it, lying, which leads into the next question that goes along with the last question. Is the farm shown in a video first ran or did the YouTuber run it many times to get a good value? This is a question you should always ask when watching a gold maker. I personally show my first run unless I do a 10 hour run, which I show all. That said, showing the best instead of showing your first is not a good thing to do or take from if your question is, is this a good spot? Reason for this is most players don't have hours to farm. So if a gold maker or a farm shown is the best they did, it's kind of pulling their leg and wasting their time. Because the player will go and farm the spot and most of the time will be let down. This type of farmers who do this to their subs makes me mad. But again, we are getting off track. To tell if whether this is happening or a farm is being shown this way, make sure to take into account does the farm shown in a video keep getting or get the rarest items? Yes, I know some could get lucky and get items, but high-end drops don't happen all the time, if not rarely. Most high-end items have a less than 1% drop, so think about the rate at which the said items is dropped. It's one thing when a farmer says, hey, you know, this can drop here and you can actually get a great item here, compared to every time they show a video, it's, hey, I got the greatest item ever. This is basically a lie because this does not happen every time to us farmers. It, Believe it or not, we have bad RNG most of the time. As a farmer, I think truth and being upfront is better than showcasing a farm that has been done 30 times just to showcase the best results they have got. With that said, guys, let's move on to the next question. Now for the last question. Is this set items worth it on your auction house, and do you have time? This is a question I cannot answer. Your server will be different from mine. The reason why I use undermine mid prices for my farms is because it's the average price among all realms, but in the end, it's all about you. You have to find the right time and the right spots that will benefit you and make gold for your server. With that said, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. There will be another episode soon. Also, thank you so much to John and Catitude for being Patreons. There will be a Patreon link in the description, guys, if you want to learn more about gold. I will actually have a lot of stuff for Patreons in the coming future. If you want to check out these YouTubers right here, they're WoW YouTubers. They do a few different things. I think they're pretty amazing in the community, guys, and I would love to actually reach out to other people. So if you want to check out my channel, guys, and you're a YouTuber, and you want to reach out to me, just hit me up in the Discord. It will be in the description. So with that said, guys, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, stay stashy.